So just before I do this comparison, I just want to let you know that I will be reviewing the GTX 1050 graphics card very soon. And this is the rumored part that's going to be going in the XPS 15, the next model. Now Dell could release the new XPS 15 tomorrow with a Skylake processor and a GTX 965 in it. But the rumors are it may have a GTX 1050 so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the review of the GTX 1050 I'm going to be showing how good it video edits and of course how it games and if it goes in the XPS 15 it'll be interesting to see how it does perform so let's get on with the comparison tell you there chaps and welcome to the show today I'm going to be comparing the XPS 15 last year's model to the MacBook Pro 15 inch the late 2016 model which no one has yet and you're wondering why am I doing a comparison video when I don't even have the laptop or anyone has it it's quite easy we know what's in the Mac we know all the parts the components we know about the screen because of the 13 inch models have been reviewed we've seen teardowns of the 13 inch model and there's really nothing new in the Mac except for the touch bar and I will save judgment on that until I get it. And I will be getting a 15 inch MacBook Pro to review. So make sure you subscribe to see that and I'll do another comparison once I get it in house. But I think it's an easy comparison. And this video is for someone that's sitting on the fence and that wants to decide whether they want to go with the XPS 15 or the MacBook Pro. Here is the XPS 15. Of course, this is last year's model. A new model is due anytime soon. So if you pick this up, try and get a deal on it because there is a new model soon. Maybe November. It could be next year. Hopefully it is next year and they wait for the Cabby Lake processors. But honestly, we don't know. But I do know one thing. There are not many XPS 15s on sale on the Dell website now. There's only like currently in Australia three options, whereas there was like six or seven when it first came out. So... Obviously, they're getting rid of some of the stock there. And here is my Apple Macintosh. This is literally a Macintosh Apple. That's what I think of Apple at the moment anyway. This review is going to be fair. Just let me know in the comments if you think I'm out of order in comparing some of these things or I'm not fair. But this is totally unbiased and anything opinion based you can decide yourself. So let's start with design. Both the MacBook Pro 15 inch and the XPS 15 are beautiful. They are both pretty much the gold standard in design. This is all aluminium. The MacBook Pro is all aluminium. But this laptop here also has a carbon fiber palm rest here and it actually makes it more comfortable to type with both of them are premium design they are top draw it's going to come down to personal preference which one do you think is better i will say that the mac still has fairly big bezels compared to this it still doesn't come near the infinity edge in terms of that design element there and you've got to remember that the MacBook Pro 15 inch is a 15.4 inch screen and this is a 15.6 inch so this does have a larger display so again that's personal preference I like this better now in terms of weight and size XPS 15 actually starts at a lower weight than the MacBook Pro and the sizes are very comparable there's a millimeter here and there some parts like I think the depth on the XPS 15 is smaller than the depth on the MacBook and the MacBook is a couple of millimeters thinner at the XPS's thickest point and you've got to remember you have that taper on the XPS 15 so it does get a lot thinner there but all in all they're very similar size and a very similar weight and you must remember again this is a 15.6 inch screen versus a 15.4 so the fact that they're around the same size is actually a feather in the cap of the xps 15 there but i'll just call that even there's a draw they're around the same size and weight there's not much in it so keyboard and trackpad now i was going to separate this but it ends up being one one so let's just talk about that trackpad the mac trackpad is better there's no doubt about that this is very close though it's not a night and day difference this is one of the best trackpads on Windows, but the Mac one's better. And it has that force touch, so it's not a analog switch or compression in the trackpad there. Keyboard, another matter. Now the old MacBook Pros had really good keyboards. The new ones, they have the keyboard from the MacBook, the super thin MacBook, and they really suck. This is a much better keyboard. 
and we're talking of a magnitude better. It's a lot better than the keyboard that's on the MacBook Pro, 15 inch, 13 inch, or even on the MacBook. So I would say again, it's even. Mac has better trackpad, XPS 15 has a better keyboard. Now let's talk about sound. This has fairly decent sound, this XPS 15, but the sound has been reworked on the MacBooks. And it's fair to say that the MacBook Pro will have better sound and just going on the mobile tech review, Lisa Gray done, yes, it has really good sound. So I'll give that win to the MacBook there. There's no problems. The MacBook has better sound. Now specs and performance, this is a really difficult one or an interesting one to judge. Both of them use six generation Skylake process. With the 15 inch Mac, you have more options for processors. So with the XPS 15, you get the choice of only one i7 model and that's the 2.7 gigahertz one, I think, or is it 2.6? I'll leave a little graphic up there, which it is. And on the Mac, you start off at 2.7 and you have the option to go up to the 2.9 gigahertz i7 Skylake. So you have the option of the faster CPU on the MacBook Pro. We're talking 2.6, 2.7 to 2.9. It's not even gonna make a difference, but it is good that the Mac had the option there, but in performance, there's gonna be very little difference. And you will notice if you overclock, if you overclock by 300 megahertz, you're not getting a great gain there. And if you look at most applications, the i5s are nearly as fast as the i7. There's not much gains there as well. Now, in terms of SSD, you know, the Mac SSD is much faster than the one you can get in here, like night and day faster. The XPS 15 usually have PM951 Samsung SSDs, M.2 SSDs they are, no, 1500 read, and around 350 megabytes per second write. Now the ones in the Mac, they're like over 3000 megabytes per second read and over 2000 megabytes per second write. Now that's about the same speed as the Samsung 960 Pro or the Samsung 961 OEM SSD, M.2 SSD. Now the good thing is you can upgrade this. It's easy to upgrade. You can put one of those super fast drives in this XPS 15. With the Mac, it comes with the fast one out of the box. So you have to give it to the Mac there. But the thing about the Mac one is it's not M.2 because we've seen the teardowns of the 13 inch MacBook Pro and it uses like a unique sort of PCI Express SSD hard drive. And if they use the same one in the 15 inch model, it really sucks because that means you won't be able to upgrade your M.2 SSD in the new MacBook Pros you'll have to try and source one of those PCI Express ones, which I don't even know who makes them. So it's not using off the shelf parts that you can get anywhere. Bottom line is the Mac has the faster SSD, but when we're talking about what you can upgrade and what you can put in it, you can have the same speed if you upgraded the XPS 15 SSD there. Now graphics card, this has a two gigabyte 960M and the MacBook Pro, you can get up to four gigabyte AMD Radon GPU there. Now. In terms of raw power, they're around the same. You do get the four gigabytes on the Mac, and if you're using Mac Pro apps, the Mac flies. But if you're using Premiere Pro, you're gonna get a better result using the 960 Pro here with the CUDA cores, using the GTX 960M. Even though you can only get up to two gigabytes RAM, those CUDA cores will make the difference when you're using Premiere and so on. So for me, or for a professional that uses Adobe Suite, you're better off with the graphics card in the XPS 15. And now I'll get onto RAM, and I think this is why I give this the win in the performance stakes is because pretty much everything else can be matched similar the same. CPU, it's not much difference. SSD, yeah, the Mac's faster, but you can put a faster one in this. And graphics cards, pretty much the same. But if you're using Adobe, you would like to be using the XPS 15. But when it comes to RAM, there is no contest here. You can only get 16 gigabytes of RAM in the MacBook Pro. And that's why I give this the point in the performance stakes, because considering everything else is pretty even, that is a massive difference having 16 gig compared to 32 gig. It's literally double, but what that means is this is more future proof. I can easily chew up 16 gigabytes RAM. If, if I use Adobe Bridge and I batch process 20 raw files, I can easily use 16 gigabytes RAM. It, and having 16 gigabytes RAM on a brand new model that's supposed to be last in a couple of years, it's just a rip off, it's stupid, and it's not for professionals. Professionals will want the 32 gigs. There are already laptops out there. I've reviewed a Predator laptop 
that has 64 gigs RAM. In three years time, 64 gigs RAM is gonna be the norm. I mean, 16 will probably be standard, but most high-end machines will have 32 gigs. Having 16 gig in a computer that costs so much, it's just unexcusable. It is not for professionals, and I don't know what Apple are doing. It's just a ridiculous decision, and that's why I give this the point in the performance stakes there. Ports, that's an easy. This has more ports. It has USB 3A type ports. It has HDMI, it has SD, and it has Thunderbolt. Now the Mac, if you love dongles, well, go get the Mac, you'll love that. The Mac just is loaded with Thunderbolt ports and USB Type-C, but the thing is, professionals want the SD card slot, they want HDMI, they want USB 3, and they want it on their laptop. They don't want to be carrying dongles around, and that's just an easy win for the XPS 15. Okay, display. Now, the new Mac displays are awesome. If you look at Mobile Tech Review, the 13 inch, they're much brighter, they are awesome screens, but the thing is, they're not 4K, and they're not 100% Adobe RGB, and also, they're not touch either. Although the MacBook Pro 15 inch has a gorgeous screen, and so does the 13 inch, which is what I'm basing this information on, it has a bright screen, like if you're out in daylight or out in bright conditions, it's gonna be much better than this to use in those conditions. But if you're a professional and you want 4K screen, you want to see your previews one to one, video editing with 4K, this is what you want. And you want the 100% Adobe RGB color spectrum there. Now, the color spectrum on the new MacBook Pros, it's more than 100% sRGB, but it's nowhere near 100% RGB. So this wins in the display stakes. Much higher resolution display, 100% Adobe RGB, has touch too. And the only bonus that the MacBook Pro screens have is that they are a lot brighter and they're probably calibrated a little bit better out of the box. So I still have to give this a win to the XPS 15 in the display. Battery life, well, it will depend on what model you get of the XPS 15. If you get the full HD version, you're gonna get better life than the 15 inch MacBook Pros. And if you get the 4K version, you're gonna have less battery life than the MacBook Pro. So I'll just give that even. Depends on what model you want, but at least you get the choice with the XPS 15 and Windows versus Mac. Okay, well that's personal preference, whichever one you like. Windows does have a lot of advantages in that you can game with Windows, it has touch, and there's a lot more apps on Windows. So if you like Mac OS, you're not gonna care about those things, but um, that's personal preference. So I'll leave that up to you to decide value. It's not even close, this is much better value. You can spec one of these up full spec with 32 gigabytes RAM and it will still cost you less than what a Mac with 16 gigs RAM cost. There is no contest in terms of value. This is a much better value laptop. Upgradability, well, obviously this wins. You can upgrade the RAM and the M.2 SSD. The RAM is not soldered on like the MacBook Pro, so this wins in that department too. So there you have it. That's my comparison of the MacBook Pro 15 inch and the Dell XPS 15, the 2015 model. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. Um, was it a fair comparison there? I think the only place where Apple won was it had better sound. In all other aspects, they were either equal or the Dell XPS 15 come out on top. So it's just like a 6-1 thrash in there. So if you like this video, give me a thumbs up there. If you're new around here, make sure you subscribe. We've got lots more tech content coming soon. And until next time, guys, tally ho.